Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Positive education is a psychological educational approach which aims to develop students' well-being and promote happiness. We look at what that means in the classroom and what kind of learning it involves. There is growing evidence that positive education can help decrease anxiety, boost self-esteem and help young people achieve more at school. And in Australia, one school has developed a whole program to teach well-being and defeat depression. Let's have a look. We learn best when we're happy. Since 2008, Geelong Grammar School in Australia has put this into practice with its positive education program, combining teaching with positive psychology. Well, positive psychology is about helping students to make, or people, to make the most of their lives. And therefore, from our point of view, we have students here who are going to confront a variety of issues. And what we want to do is to help them do that. The school's curriculum is inspired by the pioneering work of Martin Seligman from the University of Pennsylvania. Teachers follow different workshops and develop their skills as new research emerges. We cover uh, material uh, that covers positive emotions, positive engagement. We look at relationships and positive relationships. Um, we look at meaning and accomplishment. As part of the program, many teachers use meditation as a regular exercise. The students meditate at the start of each class. For exams, students can meditate for up to 10 minutes before major tests. But why is it so important to teach children these skills from an early age? Um, 160,000 young Australians live with depression every year. Um, it's a fairly alarming statistic and it's one of the key things that we're targeting in this school. Positive education is designed to both uh, help students develop skills that help with resilience to uh, prevent illness and ill-being. Researchers from Melbourne University are measuring the impact on students' well-being. They use a number of methods to measure stress, including cortisol levels from saliva tests and heart rate variability. Mobile phones are also used in this study's data. So we randomly prompt the young people to respond to iPod touch devices and to indicate um, what they're doing, who they're with, and uh, their mood states, as well as whether anything positive or negative has happened recently and how they've responded to that, so what coping strategies they've used. Research in this area is still at an early stage, but for parents and students, the results of positive education are obvious. The biggest skill that I've taken from positive education is resilience and learning to apply that in everyday situations, um, however tough that they might be, that I'm learning to make the most out of them. And I think that um, this skill of resilience is something that I'll take um, you know, throughout my life. Farrell Williams' song Happy is a massive hit, perhaps illustrating how important happiness is to us. It is also increasingly central to educational approaches and one institution in Germany has developed a complete course on teaching happiness. Let's find out more in this report. These students at Hamburg's Lerkenfeld Secondary School are being given lessons on how to be happy. Welcome to Happiness Class, a subject taught in over a hundred German schools. Though vital, it's not just about having a good time. Teacher Barbara Neuber sees true educational value linked to the exercise. Stage diving aims to push pupils to their limit, to try things out with their body that they wouldn't normally dare to do. Dinge zu versuchen, die sie sich sonst nicht zutrauen. The idea behind the class is to help students develop social competence and confidence to cope with the pressure and stress at school. I tried this for the first time today and when I was standing up there I thought, OK, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But when I fell and when the others caught me, that was a real moment of happiness. I was really happy. Crossing an imaginary river when there aren't enough stones to stand on for the whole group. This is what the Rubicon exercise is about. Here, social skills and the will to communicate count much more than just grades or competition. 
The most important thing here is to teach perception. If you're not able to perceive things, then how can you handle problems? In a traditional sports class, as well as in other subjects, it's mostly about performance. In this subject, happiness, grades and competition, they're not a priority. Barbara and her colleague Ruth Eckhart teach all age groups at the school. <laughs> in this class of younger children, pupils paint whatever comes into their mind. In what is termed the student's own realm, the exercise aims to help them define themselves within the group while at the same time respecting each other. The goal is to teach young children and teenagers about their own resources. It's about raising skills awareness and how they can use these skills, especially in times of crisis. A popular activity done by all age groups is the so-called warm shower exercise. A student sits with their back to the class while the others in the group say what they find positive about them. The warm shower exercise makes you really feel happier. It was a real moment of happiness which lasted for days because you hear so many nice things about yourself which you're definitely not used to hearing. Teaching happiness as a subject is growing both in Germany and the English-speaking world. Have you ever heard of GNH, Gross National Happiness? Does it really exist for politicians? Does any country in the world have happiness as a main development objective? Well, yes. Take a look at this report from the Kingdom of Bhutan, where happiness starts at school. There are very few countries in the world that place happiness as the ultimate goal, but the tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan measures prosperity by gauging its citizens' happiness levels, not GDP. It's Monday morning and eight-year-old Jamfel is getting ready for school. Jamfel studies at a school in Wuchu, a 20-minute walk from her home. I start my school doing meditation and prayers. And when we do, <clears throat> when we pray, we respect our king, country and our religions and we promote our culture. The school in Wuchu was a pilot where educating gross national happiness was first introduced in Bhutan. It aspires to produce healthy intellectual students who grow up to be happy and productive citizens. A typical day at the school begins with morning prayers, something which is part and parcel of Bhutan's Buddhist traditions. Students learn these spiritual values early. Our actually main aim is to make the children uh, happy in the school. In the past, uh, we have uh, quite a number of children who are actually indulged in the drugs and uh, even taking kaini, alcohol. Uh, we have a lot of problems in the past, a like, few years back. Like. But now we found that uh, this has uh, drastically come down. Like. In addition to the course syllabus, students learn how to train their minds through meditation. The meditating can last anywhere from one to several minutes, teaching students how to unwind and relax. Human values like sharing, respect for the environment and community service are also instilled. This uh, is a, Educating for GNH is a novel initiative which is not very different from the child-friendly school model. Uh, this is an approach, of, a, approach to holistic uh, development of a child. But teaching happiness doesn't end in school. Parents are also key. After this change, kids started, you know, uh, they stopped taking junk foods. Then they come home and teach us how to, you know, eat organic vegetables and then how to help each other. They give us so much of advice. Now. It's a philosophy which is inspiring other countries to follow suit, notably Finland, which has a partnership with some of Bhutan's schools. Mohammed Ozaibi contacted us to say he thinks it is possible to teach happiness skills, but being happy has to come from within. What do you think? Do let us know. 
Have a very happy week. Goodbye for now. Learning World in association with Wise, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.